Hi everybody, Melissa Klein here. I'm going to talk about two of my favorite subjects, which is Moon Man fountain pens and watercolor paper. And um, here's your, I have Strathmore and Fluid, uh, and I'm going to talk about hot and cold press. These are the Moon Man pens. They're all by the same brand. And um, this is a magnifying glass I'm using to try to show you like kind of the detail and get you a uh, sense of it. This one lights up underneath, which is kind of nice. Um, and I'm going to start with this Strathmore. Um, this is cold press and you can see it's got a lot of texture to it uh, and when you're trying to get fine detail having uh, a lot of texture and you're trying to do things like text it can be kind of rough uh, this is a pocket pen uh, I'd like to have pocket pens but I've never found a fountain pen that works great as one um, uh, fountain pens are a little bit quirky like they tend to like as they get low on the ink then they will they tend to leak uh, and that's often why I have ink stains I don't know it's like this like incredibly difficult like well it's not incredibly difficult but it's like this sort of challenging thing but I love how they feel I love being able to choose different inks I love the line that they produce um, and they're a little bit finicky now writing on this it was a bumpy ride for sure and because of the texture of the paper but I was still able to get a pretty good um, you know clarity of line uh, it's a little bit fuzzy because as the pens go get low on ink they tend to leak out this is the fluid watercolor paper this is also a cold press notice that even though it is also a cold press it has a lot less texture than the Strathmore and that's just one of those things that as you're dealing with the different brands of paper there's just variety and um, there's really no substitute for seeing them in live um, I'd say you know I shop online a lot but uh, paper is one of those things that's really hard to know until you actually see it now that said I'm getting a much finer clearer line with this one um, and it's working pretty well the nice thing about rough paper is that when you're doing a lot of watercolor washes they tend to take it better than on the smooth now this is the hot press and the biggest difference between hot press and cold press is smoothness um, this is a very smooth paper um, I would say it's roughly equivalent equivalent to the texture of maybe an index card in terms of that um, not but when I go to to write on it uh, and unfortunately you're only seeing my hand <laughs> um, it's uh, I, I fix that as we go along I'm just getting a clearer sharper line with it um, I would say that the second one I did with the fluid with the watercolor with the cold press is probably a nice balance but if you're doing something with lots of fine detail then hot press is a good choice for you um, so there's just it's it all depends on what you need to do and the reality too is like you can make it work now this next uh, pen here is a full-sized one and I'm going to show you that actually they have pretty much the same nibs uh, it's just the barrel and the detailing on it you know obviously <laughs> it's, it's the, I love that crystal <laughs> it's kind of cheesy but I like it uh, and I really fell in love with like kind of the detail on the barrel of it but the the nibs themselves are pretty much the same and you can see how the other one is you know obviously a lot bigger it has a little bit more heft in your hand um, so if you like that that's good too um, and I don't find I get my I don't find my hand gets any more tired for, for the smaller one versus the larger one um, here I'm using uh, here's a little note on the ink the first one I had the noodlers red black ink which is essentially a sepia color and I, I tend to really like the noodlers ink so I just stick with them rather than going and life is complicated enough and they have many different options this is the heart of darkness uh, ink it's a basically an archival ink it's meant to stay it will run a little bit if you water it down if you you know go over it with a watercolor wash it won't stay the way that India ink does um, but it's a nice kind of you know using I find using fountain pens for my lettering is a lot easier than if I use dip pens uh, especially um, and you know just kind of showing you like the variety yes I finally realized okay nobody could see no you still can't see what I'm doing because of the way that don't people are always asking me like how do you how do you grip a pencil or a paintbrush and I'm like I've been told my whole life I'm doing it wrong so it's like this is called the left-handed hook um, but you can see I'm getting uh, kind of a nice um, 
nice, nice crisp line with it as well. I mean, any of these options will work for you. Um, some are slightly better, some are slightly, you know, not as much. So, um, and, uh, uh, so, but I, that said, it's, it's kind of nice to have something that you feel is, works the best and to know the different options for that. Um, and you can see like that, that, um, black ink is almost like kind of floating off the page in some ways in, in a good way, like with the high contrast. And I'm also kind of working a little bit pretty fun, pretty loose and sketchy because I'm trying not to have the end of the pen, like hit the magnifying glass. So it's a little bit of an awkward demo here. Um, maybe my, the, which, you know, so that just sort of just labeling that for you. And then working through to the, the next option, um, and this is the biggest difference, which is the bent nib. And I'm a big fan of bent nibs because I like to have a lot of variety and I like to have a lot of options in one. You know, if I can find one tool that can do many different things, I'm a happy camper. They need to do them well. But you can see, like, basically, just like it sounds, like it's a bent back nib. And you're like, well, so why? <laughs> you know, because I can, the, in a nutshell, I can get a very broad and a very thin line. I can get some nice variety with the fine nib. And um, that's why I like fountain pens is because even with a fine nib, I can, I can get a pretty good thick thin, you know, as you can see, like with that last one I did. Um, but I also really like a big, juicy, like wet, bold line. Uh, and here though, you can see though, with this, with this textured paper that like, wow, it gets pretty, pretty, uh, rough there. Like it's, it's almost kind of bleeding out a little bit. I'm using this blue eel ink. It's like a formula that is kind of meant like, almost like I think about like cars, how they'll try to like have like clean your engine is the idea with it. Notice how I can turn the the nib upside down and get a super fine line or this super thick, thick, thick line. So, um, I, I like it a lot, especially for doing like if headlines and lettering that I want to stick out and be bold, but then I can just flip it and still be on the same pen and have like this lovely fine line. And also depending on the pressure, um, you know, and you can see, you can see a little bit on that, that demo, you can, um, I did this a couple of times to get it right. Um, depending on the pressure, your, um, you can create thick and thin lines. So d with fountain pens, not only pressure, but also turning it upside down can make a difference. Sometimes turning a very fine nib pen, uh, upside down doesn't uh, the ink won't flow very well, but on this one, it certainly does. Um, this is also really kind of cool for like filling in areas kind of in that middle zone where it's like too, um, too small for a brush, but you know, too, but at the same time, you've got enough fair amount you want to cover with it. Um, and here you would need to be a little bit careful. Uh, well, actually on all of these, because it is so wet and comes out so much, uh, to not be like smearing it. That is one caveat. I'm kind of amazed I don't smear it, but I think it's just, I've gotten used to almost kind of holding my hand a little bit in the air. I know that looks a little bit like a smear, but that was more just, um, actually I went to do an M instead of an N for noodlers. Um, so here's a little quick summary, just shows you a little bit of the variety. There are subtle differences, but they're significant. I think that's something to note down. And I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching.